Hi everyone, good morning, it's Margaret Manning here. Welcome to 60 and Me. Welcome to a brand new day. Hope you're doing great this morning, got a good sleep, feeling strong, happy, positive today. Um, I am drinking my cup of tea this morning. Actually, my son and his wife bought me a present. <laughs> it's a, cup, it's a, a package of tea called Snore and Peace. Like War and Peace, Snore and Peace, because I, I think I've mentioned to you that I'm having little uh, sleeping episodes now, like many of you, where I've been waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30, and just wide awake and um, deciding to just get up for a few minutes and then go back to sleep for a couple of hours. I don't know what it is, just a phase. But anyway, they bought me this great tea. It's called Snore and Peace. It's a uh, clipper is the brand of tea. I think you get it in the States. I've seen that before. But anyway, here I am with my Snore and Peace, although I'm going to wake up. It's chamomile. It's a chamomile base tea <laughs> but anyway I'm feeling energized now and uh, as I said before I'm not particularly worried about sleep um, I get enough of it um, I get good rest I meditate if I fall asleep when I'm meditating I know that I'm not getting enough sleep <laughs> so that's a good sim uh, sign but anyway I hope you um, hope you're feeling good strong and ready for you know ready for, ready for a nice day you know most of uh, the people who are watching this I say most I would say a good percent <coughs> I just dropped something. Um, are, most of you are retired. And, um, you know, retirement is one of those abstract concepts that many are still working part time or doing some um, related mentoring or volunteering. And, um, you know, that's so, but most of us are at the point where we're not um, with a, having a full income from a corporate or a full time job. So, you know, we want to live our life in the same way that we imagined we would when we were retiring. But we, uh, of course, are working on a different budget. So we've got more free time, but less money to spend in it. Now, of course, there's, there's other people who are doing just fine. So this is, this is a little chat for those people who, who either, you know, just are not um, finding themselves with enough money to live the kind of lifestyle that they wanted, or those who just want to spend their money carefully. And um, that's probably how they're doing so well with their money <laughs> these days, unlike some people. Hands up. But anyway, retirement is um, a mixture of excitement and anxiety. It's a time where we really know that we've got you know, fairly limited time. It's not like we have, you know, well, we never do have know what we've got ahead of us. But, you know, it's that time where we want to do so much stuff, but we have find a budget is in our, sometimes in our way. And we've got to deal with that. You know, we've really just got to own it and we've got to budget carefully uh, and, you know, maybe not worry quite so much about, you know, where we're going to be next year or the year after. Just, just try to live in the present moment and to do things that bring you joy. And um, we've got several bloggers who write about this. Uh, Lisa Dunkel writes about um, how to live like a princess on a millionaire's budget. <laughs> really sweet articles. And she's putting together a book on this topic, actually, too, which is going to be great. All of her millionaire uh, on a budget um, stories, which are great. But we have another one, uh, Molly Wisniewski. I hope I'm spelling that, uh, pronouncing that right, Molly. But um, she also wrote an article about ways to pamper yourself in retirement. You know, just things you can do that don't cost, well, either very little money or no money and um, kind of supplement all the other things that you want to spend money on. I think there's some great ideas. I mean, one of them, okay, absolutely no doubt about it, that most of the women that I read comments from in our community love to read. They are readers. We love books. And whether you're reading on a Kindle or you're reading on an iPad or a pad or a tablet of some kind or just reading a real book, um, you know, we love it. And there is something about sitting down with a book, a cup of tea, um, and going on fascinating journeys with people who are uh, taking you there from the ideas that they come up with in their mind. I, I, I'm going to a bookshop. Shop. We have an uh, English bookstore in Zurich, and I go in there, and I am amazed by the number of books <laughs> that are out there in the world. Um, I don't know if you know this, actually. I did publish a book when I was uh, well, in my 30s, and... Um, it's a book on hospices. It's a book that um, I was asked to write uh, by Souvenir Press because I was working with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and I had, um, there was really no, no books written about it and, or very few. And at that time, uh, 83, I think it was, there were no um, uh, books on, there were no hospices in the United States. 
it just goes to show how quickly that movement has grown. But I, so I've been through publishing a book and um, I remember it, it was a library t style book and lots of people read it. But, um, you know, the number of books we have now that can take us on journeys to other people's experiences and to learn about new ideas and new crafts, really, really interesting. And you don't have to leave the comforts of your home. You can just have a cup of snore and peace tea before you're going to bed or just curl up on a Sunday afternoon with, uh, you know, with a whole book. So book, reading can reduce stress. Um, Molly's number here is 68% re reduction in stress and um, reduces your heart rate, rate and it can relax you, relax your muscles. So, you know, we've written lots of, of articles at 60 and Me with book recommendations and I would suggest you go hunt those down. Maybe I'll leave a couple of links because they are, people are given, given suggestions like hundreds of books and there's no shortage of ideas. But another thing you could consider, and Molly mentions it, is to actually go back and read a book that you read when you were younger. Um, I just read Siddhartha again by Herman Hesse, and I read it in college. You know, it was one of those hippie books. But when I read it again, it was really interesting uh, view of Buddhism and about, um, oh, I don't know, self-discovery. And uh, so if you take a book that you read in college or high school or just for fun, read it again. See how you've changed. Maybe the, the book hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> but you have. Another thing is to pour a cup of tea. So I've got my cup of tea. I've, I, I agree 100% with this. There are some teas that are excellent for sleeping or for at least relaxing. Chamomile is one of them. Uh, lemon balm is another. Uh, the Puka Love Tea that I drink, which is uh, lavender, rose. Um, I think it's got chamomile. And it, it's just amazing, beautiful tea for, for resting. I'm not saying it will put you to sleep, but I think there's something about sitting down with a cup of tea <laughs> that just sets you up for a rest and just for taking it easy, you know, and just pamper yourself. Go out and buy a little box of tea. They don't cost all that much. And maybe buying a little box of special tea bags, maybe an assortment will make you feel special. Like You deserve it. You know, you deserve something unique and wonderful. So go for it. Another thing to do is music. I actually, it's funny, I used to listen to music all the time when I was working, but now I find um, I don't listen to music as much as a, like a side-by-side -side activity, but I do listen to, um, you know, for relaxing at night. I put my headphones on, uh, maybe I'm reading something online, you know, some article or Facebook, my Facebook uh, people, and, and our articles, of course, and I'll put on some music. And um, I pretty much love all kinds of music. I don't know about you. I just, um, I find, well, even country. I mean, I know I say even country because country is usually the one that says, oh, I like everything but country. I actually like country music too. I like classical. I like pop music. I really love pop music. There's a DJ. His name is Earworm, like in Earworm. And he is... Um, really cool. I worked with him when I was at Microsoft on a project and ever since I've listened to his pop uh, collages. He, he does what's called mashups and he and they're pop so they're not terribly restful but just taking the time to listen to music is pampering. Another thing, I ha have you guys heard the uh, latest song by Ed Sheer Sheehan and uh, Andre Andrea Bocelli? Oh my goodness. Um, Ed Sheehan is a you know pop singer. He's he's a kind of a folk pop singer. He's um, he doesn't do big orchestral things. He plays his guitar and beautiful tunes. He writes them mostly his, himself. He wrote a song called Perfect. It's a love song for his girlfriend. He's just getting married, by the way. Trivia. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he um, wrote this song Perfect. He recorded it. Did very well. But he went to Italy. I think it was Italy. And uh, sat down with Andrea Bocelli, who's an opera singer. And they sang it together. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. It's just so pretty. And Andrea Bocelli is, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but it was, his voice is so romantic, really beautiful. I hope, well, if you may have listened to it, it was a big hit at the holidays, so you might know exactly which one I'm talking about. Anyway, music, great way to pamper and calm yourself, lowers your blood pressure, calms your breathing. It's good for you. So another thing, good for nostalgia too. And we've put lots of our articles up recently about uh, our boomer days and all the cool music. So you can go back down memory lane, good exercise. Another thing you might try is meditation. 
Now, I, I've been meditating now for oh, 40 years. <laughs> I meditate a lot um, because it's, it's my way. It's not just a way of pampering. It's my way of fueling my energy and um, keeping perspective. And it's helped me through some bumpy times and it's helped me through some great times. And I'm actually taking some further instruction now um, in meditation. I'd love to eventually teach meditation. I think that would be just it's such a credible outlet for people, not just men, not just women, but of all people. I think it could help us so much to calm our differences and um, you know find a balance in our lives. But anyway, that's another thing for the future. Another when I have more time. But anyway, that's a pampering activity for sure. Try it. It's not that hard, and there's um, plenty of links. Uh, I've, I've actually mentioned it several times. I have a woman I've interviewed called Susan Piver. Who P I V E R? Who does something called the Open Heart Project to, to, to teach meditation? It's really cool, free, and uh, she's a lovely teacher. Anyway, pamper yourself. That's the message. Retirement's hard. <laughs> Lots of stress. No money. Nothing to do. Well, you know, like all those dreams we had crashing around us. But we've got so much we can do. There's so many things we can enjoy in our lives. And there's there's a few others that um, Molly didn't mention, but I think those are a great start. And so I think we deserve pampering, don't you? Even in retirement or whatever you're calling it. So I hope that you enjoyed that conversation. Hope it was, was fun and useful and um, that you've got something great planned for today to pamper yourself. And let us know, how, how, how what are you going to plan to do in retirement if you haven't retired already? And if you have, what are you doing with your you time, with your me time now? Let's have a conversation. It'd be great to have a chat and um, I'll join in um, you know, when I can and just have a great, great day. Take care of yourselves. Pamper yourselves. Let us know how you, what you're doing with your me time these days. Take very good care. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.